In this lecture, we'll talk about basic definitions and operations on vectors. So first of all, for this class, a vector is a matrix that has only one column, and sometimes we'll just call that a column vector. So you may have seen vectors in other contexts. You may have seen them in a physics class, or you may have seen them in a multivariable calculus class. Uh, but for our purposes, we're just thinking of a vector as being just a single column of a matrix. So notation-wise, R2, so the way we read this notation is not R squared, but we just call that R2, is the set of all vectors with two real entries. And so examples of elements are, for example, 3, negative 4, so we've got two real numbers here in a column vector, or 0 and pi. And again, our entries can be any real numbers, positive, negative, can be rational, irrational. Notice the notation here as well. We're using a boldface lowercase letter for our vectors. That's going to be a very common notation. Now, when we write things out by hand, it's hard to write a boldface letter by hand. So typically what we'll do is instead of writing a boldface U, we'll write U with a little arrow on top of it. So that's going to be the way that we'll write it with our handwriting, rather than trying to draw in boldface. Same thing over here. Instead of a boldface V, we'll write that as V with a little arrow on top. But when you see this in print, you'll see the boldface letters. Now, you may have also seen this R2 notation before, because it's also a notation that's used for ordered pairs. So a comma B like that is just another way of thinking of that column vector AB written in square brackets with the A on top of the B. So those are going to be sort of interchangeable notations that we'll use. Now, there are a couple important operations we can do on vectors. We can add two vectors, which we do by taking the first number in the vector and the first number in the second vector and adding those together to get the first number in the resulting vector. And then same thing for taking the second number in each vector, adding those together, and getting the second number in the resulting vector. Same thing by multiplying by a scalar. So we take this scalar and multiply it by both of the numbers in the vector, and that gives us our scalar multiplication. What we don't do, at least not yet, is take two vectors and multiply them by each other. That's not really going to be something that's going to be too interesting of an operation to us in this class. It may be something that you talk about in other classes. So the general definitions here are that if we have a vector u with components u1 and u2, so the numbers inside the vectors are called components, and a vector v with components v1 and v2, and c is just any real number, then we add the two vectors by simply adding the first components and adding the second components. And we multiply by a scalar simply by multiplying the scalar by each component. And so we say that this operation is component-wise. That means we just basically do the operation in each component separately and group the answers together into a vector. Now there's a special vector called the zero vector, which again is typically written in print with a boldface zero. When we write it with our handwriting, we'll write it as a zero with a little vector uh, arrow on top. And again, that's to distinguish this from the number zero, which is just a zero without a little arrow on top. So zero with an arrow on top is the zero vector, which is a column vector that has lots of zeros in it. And then zero itself is just the number zero. So you want to make sure that you have that distinction in your mind between the zero vector and the number zero. And the zero vector has this nice property that when you add it to any other vector, you just get the vector that you started with. And if you multiply the zero vector by a scalar, again, you just get the zero vector back. Now, if you've seen vectors before, you may have seen vectors thought of in a geometric fashion. And so we can identify the point a comma b in the plane with the vector a b. And so typically we'll visualize that vector by drawing an arrow from the origin, which is the point zero zero, to the point a comma b. And that's going to look like this. So for example, we can visualize the vector negative 5, 4 by drawing an arrow from the point 0, 0 to the point negative 5, 4. So this blue arrow here is a visual representation of the vector negative 5, 4. Now we can think of our vector operations in a geometric way as well. When we add two vectors, geometrically what's happening is we can draw a parallelogram where the two of the sides of the parallelogram are the two vectors that we started with. In this case, I've got a vector u, which is the vector 3, 5, and the vector v, which happens to be the vector 2, negative 4. And when I add those together, I get the vector u plus v. And when I add 3, 5 to 2, negative 4, do that component-wise, I get 5, 1, which is exactly what this vector is, u plus v.
Now scalar multiplication I can think of as making my vector longer or shorter by a factor of the scalar that I multiply by. So if I multiply by the number 2, that has the effect of doubling the length of my vector. As another example, if I multiply my vector by, say, 0.4, that has the effect of shortening my vector. So if I multiply by a number that's bigger than 1, that makes the vector longer, but still point in the same direction. If I multiply by a number that's between 0 and 1, that makes the, number sh the, the vector shorter by that same factor. And if I multiply by a negative number, that has the effect of the scaling that we already talked about, plus it's going to flip the vector around and make it point in the opposite direction. So in this picture, we've multiplied our vector by negative 3, which has two effects. It flips the vector around to point in the opposite direction, and it scales the vector by a factor of 3. So the, the new vector, negative 3u, points in the opposite direction, and it's three times longer than the original u. Now we don't have to restrict ourselves to two dimensions, although two-dimensional vectors are easiest to visualize, but for any positive integer n, the set Rn contains all n tuples of real numbers. And remember that word n tuple here just, is just a generalization of a pair or a triple. It's just an ordered list of numbers that it, where there's n of those numbers. So a1, comma a2, comma a3, and so on, all the way up to a sub n. And then we can just think of that as the same as a column vector that has n entries or n components. So a1, a2, all the way down to an. Now we can generalize all of the definitions of the operations that we talked about, vector addition and scalar multiplication, and those operations are going to have these very nice algebraic properties. So one of the things that we do when we study algebra as a area of study is we think about what are the properties that the operations that we're talking about have. So number one here is sometimes going to be called the commutative property. And commutativity is just a fancy way of saying that if you take u plus v, that's the same as, u, uh, as v plus u. Similarly, for number 2 here, that says if we add three vectors, it doesn't matter how we group them. So it doesn't matter if we add u plus v first and then add w, versus adding v plus w first and then adding u. This property is called associativity, or the associative property. Number three here is something that we already talked about, that when we take u plus zero and zero plus u, that's just the same as u itself. And this would tell us that the zero vector is an additive identity. Number four says that if we define negative u to simply be negative one, the scalar negative one times u, then u and minus u, if we add those together, they cancel out and just give us the zero vector. This means that minus u is the additive inverse of the original vector u. For number 5, we have c times u plus v being c times u plus c times v. And number 6, we have c plus d, where c and d are scalars, times u, equaling c times u plus d times u. These are both distributive properties. And number 7 says that c times d times u is equal to c times d times u. That's another associative property. It's not quite the same as an associative property because these aren't the same operations. d times u is scalar multiplication, but c times d is just regular multiplication of real numbers. So it's a kind of associativity. And then finally, number 8 says that when we multiply number 1 by the vector u, we just get u. And that's, again, a kind of multiplicative inverse. A multiplicative identity, I mean. So these are properties that we see often when we study algebra. When we study any kind of algebraic system, we have operations, and we want to know whether those operations have these nice properties. And so in this case, when we're talking about vector addition and scalar multiplication, we do have a lot of these nice properties. So as you study more algebra and study more algebraic systems, you're going to see these properties come up over and over and over again.